Good morning. Well, we think about this great sacrifice that Abraham was about to make. God had said to him that through Isaac he would bless him. And yet he now seems to be saying something which was contradictory. He was saying, take your son up on this mountain and offer him as a sacrifice. You may not realize this, but the point to which God was pointing was exactly the same place which many years later God was going to offer his son as a sacrifice. He was pointing to this very same place. Abraham had these two things in his mind, God's promise and God's request that he offer his son. He gets to the mountain and he says to the servants, he says something strange. He says, the young man and myself, we're going up on the mountain to offer sacrifice. And then he says something. He says, and then we, we will return to you. How can that be? Because somehow this man of faith has such a strong faith that he realized that even if he obeyed God and took his son up on the mountain and offered him a sacrifice, because God had made his promise, God would have to resurrect his son and bring him back. Otherwise, God's promise could not be fulfilled and God's word cannot be denied. God's word must hold. It must hold. You see, when the angel, this is a jump now, when the angel said to Mary that the child that is going to be born of you, God is going to give to him the kingdom of his father, David, that cannot be denied. So when Mary saw Jesus being led up onto Calvary and crucified on Calvary, I wonder what she thought. Was she in the same frame of mind as Abram? trusting that even though her son die on Calvary, somehow God would have to raise him from the dead if his promise was going to be fulfilled. Abram goes up on that mountain, and Abram knows in his heart, he doesn't know how it can possibly happen. Will his son actually be killed? Will his son actually be offered in sacrifice on that mountain? He doesn't know. I wonder what Mary was thinking. Will Jesus come off the cross? Will he sort of confound his enemies? Will this be just the big testing point where he's willing to die and then God will bring him off and establish him again? I don't know. I don't know. I know that in my life God has said to me many things, many things which I've never actually seen come about. I remember at the start of my ministry, uh, one of the first sermons, the, yes, it was the first sermon I ever preached. God said to me, you look out at the world at the moment and you see almost devastation, the Christian faith almost collapsing. But I will bring a revival into this world and you'll once again see my kingdom established and you'll see the churches and the chapels filled with people and you'll see the people turning back to God. And all through my lifetime, I've been waiting to see it. I thought it was part of the charismatic movement. It wasn't. I've been looking for it, thinking about it. Uh, Billy Graham came, and all that came from him. And we look forward to seeing the blessings coming from that particular ministry. And it wasn't to be. We look now at a world which is, seems to be sinking further and further into despondency, where at world where Christians are coming under persecution. And I say, Lord, when is this going to happen? How is it going to happen? I believe that when God said we would see this great revival come, it will come. I don't know when. I honestly don't know when. Will it be in my generation? I don't know. Will it be in your generation? I just don't know. But God's word cannot be stopped. It will come. Mary seeing her son on the cross knowing that the angel said to her that God would give to him the throne of his father David, 
must have wondered, how can this possibly be? Here is my son being crucified on the cross, and he's not coming off. And look, he is finally dead, and the soldier has thrust a spear into his heart. He is truly dead. How can this be? But the trust anyway. And Abraham standing on the, going up onto Mount Moriah. And Isaac says to him, Lord, Father, he says, here's the kindling, here's the fire. Where's the sacrifice? And Abraham turns to his son, he says, the Lord himself will provide the sacrifice. But then he binds his son and puts him on the altar. And he takes a sacrificial knife. And he raises the sacrificial life. God has made the promise that through Isaac all his descendants will come. He raises the sacrificial knife. He intends to kill his son. And God knows he's going to go through with it when he stops him. He says, your faith is strong. Take that ram over there with his head caught in thorns and sacrifice that in the place of your son. The last minute, at the very last minute, Lord, I trust your word. I trust what you say. You said it to Abraham. You said it to Mary about her son. You said it to me. I don't know when this revival will come. But Lord, I trust your word that one day it will. Amen.